everyone, so I am pretty excited right now, and that is because I am done with the slog. This is Crossroads of Twilight is the end of the slog, and I am very excited because I didn't think it was that bad. I thought Crown of Swords, Path of Daggers, Winter's Heart, Crossroads of Twilight, I mean, were they a little slower? Yeah. Were they probably towards the bottom end of the Wheel of Time books? Yeah. But... I thought that they were really enjoyable. I thought that there were a ton of great moments to glean kind of away from each of those books. Each of those books had some great moments. And um, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. If, the, if that's the worst, if I'm through the potential worst, I'm totally okay with that. Um, so let's just kind of start my review of Crossroads of Twilight. Um, first off, spoiler alert though, for every book up to this point in the series, I'm going to be talking pretty freely, going in pretty deep, and well, let's just get started. Um, but what the first thing I'm actually going to say though is really doesn't pertain to this book, but it's a question that I have. Don't answer it if it's a spoiler, but who killed Asmodian? Am, am I supposed to know who killed Asmodian? Is that is, is has that been answered? Like I'm just I, that was just occurring to me like while I was reading this book because you know it's a little slower. I'm just like what whatever happened with that? Like that was such a it's such a suspenseful ending for Fires of Heaven. I'm just like I I, I felt like I never got resolved for that. I, I really hope that I find out at some point. Um, next I'm gonna say Shadar Haran. Every scene with him is so freaking cool, and like I mean, first of all, the mirror draw just as a species are really freaking creepy. Um, but to have one that has so much influence is just great, and I'm I'm really interested to learn more about what his specific connection to the dark one is. Like, is he the dark one? Is he just a dark one servant? I'm thinking servant. He is like just a a very very close servant. That that is my kind of interpretation of it um and then um Al Alvarian really really lucked out with that one um next I'm gonna say um with as far as Rand goes I mean Rand and Loghain talking that was nice but like one of the reason why I feel like these books have really these past couple of books have really suffered is that there has been so little Rand I mean we got no Rand in this book practically none the three best books in the series were easily books four five and six N no question about it and they all had a solid amount of Rand they had a good balance with the other characters unlike with like Eye of the World which was more Rand focused like it's, Eye of the World was super Rand heavy um but I feel like Robert Jordan really hit the perfect balance with books four five and six because you had Rand right at the forefront he has this like really interesting story but you did have a good balance with the other characters and they all had some good moments in there I mean Shadow Rising, great character arc from Perrin with, you know, um, Fires of Heaven, you good stuff with, um, with, uh, with Matt, sorry about that. And then, um, book six, oh, I'm trying to think of some good character. Mode. I mean, Egwene come, becoming the Amarlin in book six. I mean, there was good stuff in each of those books. Um, and so I, I, I think that that's kind of where this story, where, where these books have kind of dropped a little bit. Um, but I, I'm, it's just because like, I find myself so much anticipating, well, what's Rand doing? Like, I'm so excited to see what his next move will be. And like, I'm hoping that like on a reread of the series, I'll like really appreciate that Robert Jordan did focus so much on these other characters and expounding upon this like larger world. I, I really hope that that's something that I come to appreciate more. But as of right now, I'm just like, ah, oh, I want more Rand. Um, but next I mentioned Perrin, he had a great arc in the shadow rising, but I really thought that, um, his portion was cool in this book. I thought that him cutting off that Aiel's hand and like threatening to cut off, you know, the rest of the hands and feet. I thought that was awesome because I felt like what made Perrin's arc in book four so cool was he lost his parents and he just became this, this monster ready to go and get some Trollocs and like, it was that loss that drove him to that. And like now he's lost Fael and Fael's still alive. But if Fael were to die, that would really push Perrin over. And I feel like that would be, I mean, I think that that would be the setup for a really, really good character arc. Um, Elias kind of talked Perrin out of that, like at the end, like he's just like, ah, oh, you know, you don't want to do this. this. This isn't who you are. Don't worry. Like Perrin is worried that he's like becoming a monster. But like if, if Fael doesn't make it, I mean, that's, that's, um... I, I think that'd be a really good arc for a parent. I, I think that'd be really interesting. Um, next, I was going to say, um, Elaine's story about becoming a better ruler, I mean, it's all right. The stuff with the sea folk was cool. Um, but I really hope that this is an arc that, like, I come to appreciate more um, after I know how it ends. Just because, like, I, when it comes to, like, this political stuff, like, you know, talking to all the houses, like, I should be eating this up. Like, I really like this political stuff. But I just, 
I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not feeling it that much. I don't. I. I. I just don't know if like I've never super clicked with the way that Robert Jordan writes political intrigue. I mean, it's not just not with on par with like how George R. R. Martin does it. I mean, George R. R. Martin just writes this phenomenal, phenomenal political intrigue, and I just feel like Robert Jordan ha- doesn't reach that bar. He reaches it in other areas with like character development, and world building. I mean, definitely there, but with um as far as political intrigue, I'm not getting it yet. I'm. I'm not really feeling it yet. Um, the next I would say is um, Aguin is a prisoner now, and it was really interesting to start seeing her like really gain some respect amongst the rest of the Aes Sedai. But um, her being captured, I feel like, does add like a pretty interesting dynamic, um, and I'm, I'm really interested to see where that goes. Um, and I hope that it will ultimately be a satisfying arc for Aguin as well. Um, I'm talking a lot about kind of arcs in this book just because I feel like this book primarily served as development for the characters i mean we saw them just kind of flesh out their characters there really weren't that many like big moments i I wouldn't even see say any really big moments um and that's okay though i mean it's okay i mean we got matt and tuan um their relationship was fleshed out a little bit i mean it was good this was fine could it have been condensed yeah could the last couple books have been condensed absolutely am i am i okay that they weren't yeah i mean it's just more wheel of time and i think that there's like there's good things to be taken away from this and like all this great characterization and this character growth. I think that that's really something to appreciate. And I, I, I do really, I just, you know, just talking about the slog more generally now, I think that it, it, it gets a bad rap. Um, I get why some people aren't going to be big fans of it. And I hate the idea that people don't read the series because of it. Um, because I do hate that there's like this barrier to entry for like 14 books. I mean, so many people hear 14 books. They're just, that's, that's a non-starter for them. Like they're just not going to read a series of 14 books. Do I think that more people would read it if it was 12? Eh, I don't know what the cost, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's really pushing two extra books. I don't know how many people that pushes away. Um, and so for people that are going to be reading the series, I think that, you know, you when you're going to read 14 books, you're okay with maybe a little bit of meandering for some characterization. I mean, do I want this 14-book clean-cut series where there's no, like, fat, it's just the trim, perfect series? I mean, yeah, but I'm, I, mean, I mean, has anyone ever really... I mean, I know the Malazan book of the Fallen's out there. Um, I'm really excited to read that someday. But, like, there's not a lot of series that have accomplished what The Wheel of Time has done on the scale that it has done. And so, like... I think that we gotta cut it some slack, and I think that the slog gets a really bad rap. And having completed it, I I I, I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. It's, it's not as good as the other books, but like it was still really enjoyable. And that's basically my thoughts on this book, um, Crossroads of Twilight. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys disagreed with anything I said, please leave a comment down below. But if you enjoyed the review, make sure to like and subscribe, and have a great day.